But in order to achieve that, you have to have portability. And right now, we also don't have portability in our healthcare system. That is because it's linked to your job. If you lose your job, you can't keep the health, same health insurance you know, when you go on to your next job. And God forbid you have someone in your family with a pre-existing condition or your spouse happens to be pregnant because that's often seen as a pre-existing condition. And that further drives up your costs. So we have a tremendous number of challenges in our current system. And I don't believe the current model is sustainable for many of our businesses and way too many of our families. Let me spend a little time talking about what the plan was that was introduced in the House and that Jessica can talk about what's being considered in the Senate. Uh, there, the bill that was introduced is H.R. 3200. It's on my website if you'd like to go look at it. Uh, there's a summary on my website as well. Unfortunately, it's 30-some pages, but that's a fraction of what the bill is, as I've been told many, many times. Um, the way the Congress works, the way the House works, if any committee has jurisdiction over a bill, they can hear that bill in committee and they can amend that bill in committee. So what has happened is you have three different committees that have jurisdiction over this particular piece of legislation. Uh, it's the Education and Labor Committee, the Ways and Means Committee, and the Energy and Commerce Committee. They all have jurisdiction over this legislation. They all, they all held hearings on H.R. 3200. They all reported out bills different than the one that was introduced. Um, so now when we go back, it's not clear at all to me what we will eventually be facing. And, and I should tell you, this is not unusual in the legislative process. This is the legislative process. It is how it works. Oftentimes you have different versions of a bill in the House. They come together, they get a single bill that's voted on on the floor. Oftentimes they will be working on something different in the Senate that varies from House versions and we need to remedy that either prior to it coming over or in conference. I think what may happen in this case, and I certainly don't have a crystal ball as to predict what's going to happen, but I think what may happen is that we step back away from 3200 and step back away from what they're considering in the Senate and, and try to come together on a joint set of principles to move forward. I would prefer that to be bipartisan. I don't know that it will be. I would like it to be. Uh, I don't see health care as a Democrat issue. I don't see health care as a Republican issue. Let me get to some of the specifics in the House plan and some of my concerns with the House plan. The President has said and leaders of Congress have said on many occasions that if you like your current health care, you can keep it. If that's the case, we should make that explicit. Um, while if you read the bill, if you read the sections of the bill pertaining uh, to the grandfather clauses in the health care exchange, they do say that if you have an individual plan, you can keep it for a certain period of time, up to five years, uh, which is grandfathered, and then you have to go on to the health care exchange. If you are part of a group plan, what the vast majority of people are through their employers, as long as it meets the basic standards as laid out in the health care exchange, those remain in place. There are some questions about that. There are some questions as to whether or not if there are significant changes made to those plans, if the number of enrollees drop off, if the number of enrollees increase, if in fact they stay old. That concerns me because I think if we are saying, as we have said, that if you want to keep the health care you have, that's fine, then we should mean that and that should be explicit in the legislation. If you want to get off of that health care or if you lose health care because the business is not offering it or you lose your job or whatever it might be. In the bill in HR 3200, there is established a health care exchange. The health care exchange is a market. It is a market of private payer entities, that is, you know, the Uniteds, the Aetnas, the Blue Cross and Blue Shields of the world, and in the House version, there is a public option. basic tier plan, kind of like catastrophic coverage. This is not unlike what you do when you purchase car insurance. 
It's catastrophic coverage for your basic tier plan. Anyone, any one of the private insurers that offers that plan can also offer a plan on the second tier, which offers better coverage, which you know offers a lower deductible and higher, you know, more coverage. And then there's a third tier plan, which offers all the bells and whistles. The idea of the public option, the reasoning behind the public option, and you can disagree or agree, is that in many places in the United States, we don't have a real market for healthcare. I don't know about how many of you have gone out and tried to privately shop for healthcare or as your businesses have tried to do it, but in many places in the United States, there is not a broad array of providers. And in actuality, there is a very limited number of providers. And the idea of the public option is to provide competition where competition isn't existing. I realize that's a bit of an oxymoron uh, for some. But that is the intent. It's also intended for the public option to intent. The intent is that it could offer at lower rates, not because it's subsidized by the government, because it has to be fully paid for by the premiums of the participants, but because their administrative costs could be lower if, in fact, it is more efficient. If it's not more efficient, their rates would be higher and people wouldn't choose to go onto the plan. The idea is to allow it to compete. No one is being forced into a public option. If people go onto the exchange, they have a variety of plans to choose from. That is the way the House bill is written. Now, that can change, and it may change. Let me address, or maybe we should wait for questions, but there's a couple other issues. The key here is that we need to broaden the pool. We need to spread the risk. The fact is the United States government, right now, covers the riskiest populations in the United States through Medicare and Medicaid. Those are the riskiest populations in the United States and they're covered by government insurance. It is the broader pool that is actually of less risk that we're talking about. It's estimated that almost 40% of all Americans right now receive their insurance through the federal government, either through Medicare, Medicaid, the VA, VA hospital system, or active military. So, just to get out, that out there, this is not a government takeover of healthcare, but that is the public option that is a part of this. So, I will leave it at that, and I will further explain things as, as we go to the question and answer period. Thank you.